So a lot of people ask this question um, and struggle with similar things when they're trying to play guitar and sing at the same time or any other instrument. It might be the piano, whatever it is. Um, and it's hard, isn't it? Because you're trying to split your brain into several places at once. I remember when I first started having come from the drums, um, you know, guitar has never been my instrument. I've ended up making a living with one in my hand, but... I've never felt like it's my natural instrument. Um, and I just kind of know that, you know, but I had to start somewhere because I wanted to sing and I wanted to be at the front of the stage. It took me a while to work out that's where I was supposed to be. And I remember when it was so hard to play and sing at the same time. Um, you kind of got to find a way through it somehow and split your brain into these different places. And I think at one point in time, you're either focusing on the singing or you have to just focus back on the guitar for a second. And we need to do this thing where we're kind of, one thing needs attention while the other one has to be second nature and subconscious. And so how do you do that? Well, the ideal thing is that you can play the part on the instrument really well. You're trying to be able to get the guitar down so that you really don't have to think about it. So you can think about your vocals so you can allow some of what you're doing to be second nature and just be subconscious and to just to work for itself. So the simple thing would be to say, practice the guitar on its own, practice the instrument on its own, get that absolutely nailed down, make sure it's absolutely solid, make sure you know the chord changes, make sure there's no fumbling and tripping up that's happening because of the guitar, try and get a steady rhythm happening um, so that you, you can rely on that working for you when you have to focus on singing, you can just kind of forget about the guitar. But it might be that you have to just pay attention for a second while you play that awkward chord or whatever the trickiest bits are. Maybe there's some quicker changes or something on the guitar. Whatever it is that trips you up, you have to maybe just learn to switch your brain from one thing to the other. So you just go, oh, I've got to think about the guitar for a second and, and hope that the vocal can happen subconsciously. Now, Neither of these things might be happening without attention and effort, and that's why you struggle. So you, I would say work on the guitar on its own, work on it separately, get it absolutely down, but do the same for the vocals as well, because we don't treat singing like an instrument. I say it all the time, and I, but I see examples of how that is true in so many little micro ways all the time. It's so true that musicians don't treat singing with the same sort of attention to detail and focus and practice that they do any other instrument. And perhaps it needs more because it's a part of us and we can't see it. It needs more attention. So work on the vocals separately. Sing along to a karaoke, sing along to a backing track. Just sing it a cappella. Sing along to the, excuse me, actual song. Um, get the singing down separately. Get the guitar down separately. And obviously pr try and bring the two things together, which is easier said than done. But you're trying to split your brain into two places. So it's almost like, right, when I'm coming up to this awkward chord change here where there's two changes or something, you go, right, I'm just got to focus on the guitar for this section and then think about my singing again. And you just get good at kind of going back and forth with where you're placing your attention. Um, I used to find myself kind of hitting one chord and then having to just sing the line and sort of hit the next chord where the chord changes and sing the line. And it wasn't a very fluent performance, but when I was first going out to open mic nights and stuff, it got a bit like that at times. It was a bit disjointed and you'd have to just try and keep the tempo of the track moving. Ideally, you keep the pulse for those that are listening and, and yourself where you can rely on the tempo staying the same and you're keeping the rhythm correct. But you might need to drop things out and make it less intensive and labor intensive at times in order to keep the track moving and sing the next line. And obviously you don't want it to end up like that, you're, but you're trying to be able to perform it in a way that's coherent and has some sort of fluency about it. And you might need to kind of chop and change how much of the guitar rhythm you're playing, for instance, or simplify something on the part to make it easier. Um, so that's learning the parts as well as you can and just being understanding that you might need to flip back and forward from your attention. And if you start to be able to do that and know where you need to focus on the guitar and where you need to focus back on singing, you start to naturally do that a bit more often. Um, but I would also create rhythmic cues for yourself and use counting and use some musicianship skills like counting the beat. Often what trips us up is 
what people do is they they do strum and sing at the same time, and they're supposed to be strumming then singing, and they and they just get caught in this. Oh, everything happens at once, and you do it all together, and that's part of what I was saying where you got to split your brain up. But if you can notice that the word comes in on the second beat, not the first beat of the bar, if you can notice that, <coughs> for example, there are other things like two words before the start of the line and make cues on your on your lyric page. I would have little lines that, or little accents or arrows, things that point to the first beat of the bar. So I know that that word, that syllable of that word is on the one. All the others, I sometimes put brackets around things so I know that those words come before the before beat one. But you've got to have that bit of that musicianship where you know where beat one is, you know. And rhythm is something that some people struggle with. But we need to know where the one is, where the chord changes, where the first beat of the bar happens so that you can place a note, a word, a syllable of a word in the right place, on the right beat, in the right point in the bar. So... It's things like that, maybe making notes, going to that kind of level where you 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 say one, two, three, and then that word is on the four before the one. There's one word before the start of the next bar. Things like that, just placing things rhythmically where they fit. So sort of count through it and then notice where the chord changes actually happen exactly. So you, you, you're working on the singing, you're using the singing to give you that rhythm. And it's like, okay, the chord changes on that syllable of that line there. Okay. And if I just think, okay, I've got to go to the change as I sing that part of the word or that note, that part of the, that, that part of the line, you start to be able to put the pieces together and the rest of it starts to fit into place. But take the time to do that and actually make cues and use some musicianship skills like counting the beat and working out what beat uh, things happen. Um, so, I mean, that's it, really. That's that's my top tips for practicing how to play on your own. Um, you're trying to train your brain to split yourself into two different places. Um, you might have to drop things out and play a single strum just to keep the thing moving. But do concentrate on trying to keep the general pulse of the song and the general changes of the song in the right place. So even if you just hit one strum, ba da ba da ba ba da you know, you hear where the changes actually happen and you don't play any rhythm whatsoever apart from where the chords change. So just let yourself hit, feel the beat, go through the song, bling, there's a change, carry on, there's the next change, there's the two quick changes. Okay, there, there. You know, map it out rhythmically like that. And just play the chord changes without trying to do all the extra strumming in between where you get your voice and your, and your strumming happen at the same time and you get all caught up. You can eventually get to a point where you, you can syncopate and you have this freedom where you're able to just sing over the top of whatever it is that you're playing and you can slur it and play with it and you're at, at ease with that. Um, but it takes a little while. Work on the guitar so you've actually got it down completely solid, know what you're doing, work on the singing separately so there's less to think about about the singing. So therefore, all the technique in the world to do with how to sing that line. Um, notice where the, where the accents are and where certain notes are in the bar, on which beat in the bar, um, and break things down and simplify them to enable you to kind of keep the right pace of the song and the changes in the right places before you add in more rhythm and make it a little bit more sort of complete. I hope that helps. It's a very quick video today. <laughs> I'll probably have a look at how long it's been. It's been about nine hours knowing me. But um, yeah, I'm available as always. Thanks for everyone who's been signing up to my Patreon recently to get one-on-one -on -one feedback from their video clips that they're sending me over WhatsApp. Um, that's great. And thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, I'm available as ever for online lessons and in person here in Leicester in the UK. And I hope to see you on the next video. I hope this has been a little bit helpful for you, but try and take the tips, try and take the advice and not just let it go over your head like it's like, oh, I don't know if that's really going to help me. Just try and dig into the sorts of ideas that I was saying there and see if you can not just throw yourself at a song and hope for the best, but break down some of those details and treat both instruments separately before you expect to be able to put them together. Okay, I'll leave you with that. Thank you very much. I'll see you next time.